but I turn it into a song later. Guys, hopefully you're having a wicked day out there. I know I am talking to you as I do every single week. I've been doing this for, me and you, we've been chatting like this for, for years, for years. I probably talk to you guys more than I speak to my mother. That's a bad thing, isn't it? I need to speak to my mother more. Anyway, today we've got Billy Sheen in the house. We're gonna be talking all about technique. I got to hang out with him when he was playing over in Manchester Arena. And I, you know, I've always wanted to check out Billy Sheen's technique and what he does with his right hand and that whole thing. Without further ado, guys, here's Billy Sheen. Do you, do you look at other players and you're uh, figuring out what they're doing and then trying to find your own feel for it? Like, yeah, what's your learning thing, style? The slap, I could never kind of figure out where those notes were coming from. I saw a movement, I heard the chicka 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 where is that coming from, you know? So I sat down one time and got it done. And apparently, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. So I came up with a riff that I turned into a song later. That's the tough part about it. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah, So I just yeah. sat on, uh, outside uh, in my house uh, one time, I just sat and worked that riff out. And, and when I got done, it kind of sounds like slap. I, yeah. guess, I guess it's slap. And then I did variations of that through the, through the year. And then I'll go see, see Victor Wooten and then give up on that. <laughs> yeah. I'm done. See I think later. everybody's the same. And in terms of, like, your, your plucking hand is ferocious. Ferocious. It the, is, the uh, three, the three finger thing. Yeah, that is, like was that turned into a real asset. Yeah, like where, where, where was that born out of? Did you start playing with three fingers? I started with one. Did you I just keep adding one? Top and I was going. <laughs> that was my big move right oh, there. Oh, that. Yeah. I couldn't move it anywhere. I just didn't want to drink. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, wow, look at that. So you're pushing down, yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of oh, so you've got both two. of them are together. Now that later on that came in handy when I was hammer on doing hammer ons. Because to do, that's just way too weak. I need that extra thing of it. Yeah. To really hit it super hard. Because yeah. on bass, we can string it uh, light and get the action low and get it to play as easy as a ukulele if you want. But there's a certain level of strength any individual will have. If you push too hard, he overwhelms the string and it clashes against the frets and the nothing. Well, that could be a sound in itself too. Yeah. If if he if it's if he's w too weak for it, he can't get the things. You got to find that spot between your action and what your strength is. Yeah, and how that yeah, works. So yeah. Like that intro that Mr. Big addicted to that Roger. And even without the amp on, it's pretty it's loud. It's popping out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, it's always been important to me. I practice a lot with no amp at all. A lot of times in hotel rooms, you don't you can't be yeah. plugging an amp yeah. around, even a small one. And so I try to get everything I can get out of, out of the strings yeah. and the bass. Later on, the amp sometimes is more of a, of a impediment to it, because the bass has this much dynamic range when it's sitting on your lap in a quiet room. Yeah. Plug it in. It's huge. Yeah. And it's giant. So uh, some things don't work. So that's that's one of the reasons why I've always opted for a little bit of compression to just get it back down to the way it feels. Normally. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, th these are all the little balance points that I've been I've been uh, dancing with uh, for <laughs> for many years. And when uh, after so when you went to you did the one, then did you start playing with two, and then did you just did you feel yeah? When did you? I think you... I got. Uh, I heard Tim Bogart go. Take me for a little while was the name of the song, but so that started it. And, it, and oh, there's this thing where you love breaking down. Yeah, I remember I did a clinic at um, MI when I first got there uh, to LA, uh, and it was a whole school clinic, and uh, it was my first clinic there ever. And the, the place was jam packed, and Tim Bogart sitting right in the front. So I know, great, no, no pressure, <laughs> no pressure. And I go, well, I got, I just like to say, before I did anything, I had to acknowledge Tim, the whole school roar, they love him yeah, there. Yeah. Huge. And uh, so when I went to explain what I got from him, I didn't even know what it was called. He goes, that's called raking, because it's like a garden rake. Yeah, yeah. Over, and yeah. that's raking. So yeah. just one, it's an easy way. They just kind of fall to, together. Not a lot of effort. What are you doing then? So Oh, right, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's just a thing, um, a lot of things when they go by quickly, 
uh, they can uh, obscure their simplicity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that actually is, is, is quite a simple thing. But yeah. he, he would do it. He did it initially just a just drag it across. So you yeah. Can, you it's like a gallop type thing, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the three thing, uh, I'm not sure where it actually came from, but. One essential element of it was the uh, pickups. I got them co covered in epoxy. So I Do you like the feel of the pickups underneath your fingers? Yeah, and yeah. that's why you see a lot of bases now with the ramp. And yeah, the, absolutely the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But way back in the '70s, I discovered because um, I get these, all the Fender uh, instruments. Pick one up and just touch the pole piece, and, zzz, zzz, and it always yeah. makes a noise. So it was bothering me that that noise was going on. So I, I, I. Uh, Move the pickup down and couldn't play. So I realized, oh, I see now. So I covered up with epoxy to get it, get that surface there, so I didn't get the little noise, the little ground noise yeah, that you get yeah. almost on every Fender pickup when you touch it. Yeah, that's a funny yeah. thing. Yeah. And then uh, the three thing came, and I just kind of developed it. I'm using a lot of. Uh, there's a couple things in the Sons of Apollo set where there's a, a, a four finger there. time is. <laughs> I know I'm playing it, but I couldn't tell you what it is. <laughs> and when, so. when, you, when you practice that three finger thing, like did you ever, mm. when you were trying to, like obviously this, you've been doing this forever, but when you were doing it, do you, did you ever practice like accenting with certain fingers and oh, stuff absolutely. like that? You, you did, uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you basically make it four. You're making a four out of three, so it's, it's going to like jump at the wrong spot. Da, ba, da, 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 uh, exactly. Uh, got you. So it's a, so one lands on a different finger each time. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, back again. Yeah. Middle finger. And you generally always start with the ring finger. I generally do. Yeah. It's like a machine gun, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, you know, it gets it's speedy and quick. And one of the things it's good for, though it's really difficult to do, is the uh, dub. So, so you've got you got to keep Just the like pattern. That. You got to keep the pattern. So it's. pattern and if you do it in that manner it's I've kind of worked out the uh, engineering of it <laughs> if you will it's the most efficient way because the next finger hits the next note no matter where it is yeah and the next one and it always goes in that pattern sometimes I catch myself breaking that pattern and I would kind of hear something was not right yeah but as long as I keep that pattern in there uh, that the fours and twos are relatively smooth because fours yeah. and twos are what most music is. Yeah, yeah. But the good news is when you, when you get when you get a, a, a galloping or, yeah, or yeah, a, yeah. A, a three four thing, yeah, is you you're, you got it made. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot that. Off to the races, aren't you? God rest his soul, Pat Torpy would always be. He would, wanted to play him because, yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. really got the, 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 where it sounds like it's <laughs> right because it's a bunch of threes so it kind of works out like that so uh, and uh, and that's what I, I can spend hours on thinking it through uh, doing getting the right patterns the mechanics of it all yeah yeah, yeah. And, and generally when I do uh, lessons or teaching I talk about mechanics because few people do they talk about the, the essentials of course musically in theory and in practice but the mechanics of how do you move your fingers to do that, that's what I've always It's huge, kind of, isn't it? It's so important. It's it really like, is. You can drive a car, but you better, you need to be able to turn, you know what I mean, do the shift and... Exactly. It's the mechanics of it that's gonna actually get you moving. And then you can figure out where you're gonna go on your journey. Using, exactly. You know. And then, so I leave the musical thing up to the individual. Thanks for watching that, guys. And a huge shout out to Billy for being such a dude and coming and hanging out with us. It was an amazing, amazing day. Um, it's a day that I'm going to remember for a long, long time. Obviously, if you want to you know, find out more about Scott's Bass Lessons and what I do, just go to scottsbasslessons.com. I'll put a link below so you can do that. Grab a 14-day free trial. Take me 
take me for a test drive, take the entire platform for a test drive. In a nutshell, we are the ultimate online bass school for bass players such as yourself to take your bass playing to the next level. It's a completely new opportunity where you know you can study with some of the best teachers in the world from the comfort of your own home for less than like a quarter of a cup of coffee or Starbucks a day. It's crazy, crazy cheap and it's just, you know, an amazing, amazing opportunity for you to really push that bass playing to the next level so you can, you know, so you can be the bass player that you're damn well supposed to be. Now, obviously, make sure you subscribe to the channel and as always, take it easy. I'll see you in the shed.